Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 41, it says, John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed us not, not us. <laughs> and, uh, and we forbade him, forbade him, because he followed not us. Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever, shall, uh, uh, for whosoever shall give you a cup of water uh, to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Uh, that's, that verse 41, oh, it just seems to switch there, because this man didn't give them a cup of cold water. I, I always think of cold water from that other parable. But he, they didn't give him a cup of water. I mean, the man, just like John saw this guy casting out demons, said, follow us. You know, if you're for the Lord, follow us. We're the apostles. And the guy said, no. <laughs> and so uh, John wanted to forbid him from speaking. And the Lord just says, no, let him alone. If he's not against us, then he, if, uh, yeah, if he's not against us, he's on our part. And, uh, and that, you know, that kind of confuses me when I look at the whole situation. But as we already looked, and I won't do anything but, but explain what we've already studied, is there is a time in which John, as an apostle, will sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of Israel. But what the Lord's teaching him here, it's not time for him to judge. And even the Lord himself did not come to judge in the first coming. He came to give his life a ransom for many. And, uh, and so, just as the Lord didn't come to judge at this time, it's not time for John to start judging and, and the Lord is actually teaching him a, a, a lesson about not, about not judging and also realizing that in the context, since they don't understand Christ is going to come to die the first time, they, they got some things to learn yet. When judgment finally will, <clears throat> when the 12 apostles do sit on those thro 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel, or even before that, when the Lord Jesus Christ ascends back into heaven, and, and you see Ananias and Sapphira, uh, those are the right names, right? Yeah. Uh, lying to them, and then them in the presence of Peter just falling dead. Uh, the, when they have that authority, that authority will be given to them first because of the imparting of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, not only do they not understand Christ is going to die first, they don't, they don't, they're not empowered by the Holy Spirit to be in a place of judgment yet. There's things for them yet to learn. So he's being warned about not judging. Now, let, let's make, go back to our application and, and look at the verses we were kind of looking at last week in 1 first, in first Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, I want to just point out these verses because what, what we started to look at is not only is there a time for John to judge and a time he wasn't supposed to judge. Uh, I also, we also looked at verses that talked about no one can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. And yet there's verses that say, the Lord says, many are going to say unto me, Lord, Lord, have we not done all these things? And he said, I never knew you. So, you know, you look at that and you say, well, how is that, you know, you got both going on here, don't judge, and yet if someone calls him Lord, then, you know, accept him as uh, maybe a brother in Christ or someone who's at least not against you, so he must be for you, and yet some people are going to call Jesus Lord, and he's going to say, I never knew you. And what, what I, my point is, is there's a fine balance between judging and separation, and, uh, and, and, and that's not only true, like in the kingdom program, there's some people that they're going to have to separate from. We, we could go to First John and realize in their program, uh, if a man comes, bid you some things, but doesn't uh, believe that Jesus has come in the flesh, don't bid him Godspeed, don't let him in your house. So there is, there is you do judge it like a doctrine, and you do separate from false doctrine. But there's a fine line in there, in the, in, and you can see it here in First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5, it says, therefore judge nothing before the time. And that's, and Paul's saying that because there's some people judging him, and he says that's a very light thing to him. So he says, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. So judge nothing before the time, right? Look at the next chapter. Here's a guy living in sin. 
And Paul says in verse 3, For verily as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, I have judged already. <laughs> and, he, and as you read down through the passage, he's telling them to judge. Make a judgment call. In fact, because we won't have time to get back there, in verse 9 says, I wrote unto you an epistle uh, not to keep company with fornicators, and not altogether with the fornicators of this world. We're not talking about fornicators that are lost, or covetous, or extortioners, or idolaters, for then we must needs go out of the world. I mean, how in the world are you going to stay away from fornicators in the world? You know, they're everywhere. You can't go to Kmart, you know. <laughs> But, but I have written unto you not to keep company if any man is called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or idolater, or railer, or drunkard, extortioner, with such a one know not to eat. For what have we to, to, to do to judge them that are without? Do ye, do ye judge them that are within? Do ye not judge them that are within? But them that are without God judges. Therefore put away from among you that wicked person. So, here's a man living in sin, fornication, right in the presence of the congregation, and Paul says, judge that man, throw him out of the assembly, don't, let him, don't have fellowship with him, don't eat with him, until you, chapter uh, 2 Corinthians, they, they're to restore the fellowship because the man stopped living in sin. But uh, when it says at the end of verse 12, do, you not, do, ye not judge, do, do not ye judge them that are within? Paul's telling you to judge. We just said don't judge, and now he's telling you to judge. But See, the man will stand before the Lord to be judged, but what they're to judge here is the lifestyle of this man. See, the, the whole thing started out in verse 1 of chapter 5. Notice this. It is reported commonly that there is fornication. And then he starts naming this man. There is no question. They're not judging and saying, you know, I think this man's living in fornication. I, I saw him go out with his girl and he got home real late at night. That, that's not what's going on here. This guy is living with a woman coming to church with a woman, not even ashamed that they're living in open fornication together. So there's not like you're uh, judging him in a sense like, I think he's doing something. It's a fact. He'd tell you he's doing it. And now you're supposed to make a judgment call whether you should have fellowship with him. And the answer is you shouldn't. So, see, in one sense you don't judge. You leave judgment up to the Lord. But in another sense you do judge. You judge the lifestyle of someone. And I'm going to show you several verses about doctrine. I don't, there was another verse in chapter 11 that talks about judge yourselves so you're not judged. And when you are judged, you're chastened of the Lord. But let's look at some other verses. Come over to Romans chapter 16. Because that, that, we just looked at lifestyle there. And this could be lifestyle as well, although it involves doctrine. I went the wrong way. All you had to do is go back a couple pages. <laughs> Romans chapter 16 and, uh, and verse 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So there's some people you stay away from. And here's some people, whether it's in the practice of the doctrine that's in Romans chapters 12 through 16, or the belief of the doctrine that's in Romans chapters 1 through uh, 11, Paul says if there's, if there's those that are causing divisions and offenses contrary to that doctrine, you're to mark them and you're to avoid them. Now mark them, they got a name, that's how you mark them. John Smith, whatever the guy's name is. That guy is causing divisions, contrary to the doctrine Paul taught, and then so you avoid. That's why you don't have fellowship with him, you avoid him. And, and so there are, you, apparently you are supposed to make some judgment calls, aren't you? Now, John Smith will give an account to the Lord someday. You leave it up to the Lord to judge him. But you can tell if he's, making, if, if he's causing divisions contrary to Paul's work, doctrine to us. And then you know to avoid him, not have any fellowship with him. Now, there's a lot of these. Look over Galatians chapter 1. In verse 8, it says, and, and the gospel's got to be the most important issue. It says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That's pretty strong language. Uh, some, some take that accursed as just being uh, like a believer uh, excommunicated from the church. Uh, but if, to me, if the guy believes the false message that he's preaching, then, then he is damned. 
it says, uh, As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. So, there, you know, you do make a judgment call if a person's not teaching the gospel of the grace of God. If they're not teaching salvation by grace through faith alone in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, then uh, just consider that man accursed. Uh, either cut him off from yourself or just let him be accursed and God will cut him off uh, in judgment uh, at, the judge, at the great white throne judgment for him if he's a lost man. Come over to, uh, well, I want to look at these, Philippians chapter 3. Now here's one, you need to catch the context of this passage so that if you just watch modern day preachers on television, this is going to tell you what to do with the channel, on your, the tuner on your TV. It says, Philippians chapter 3 verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them what, which walk so as you have us for an example. Now you're marking some good people, aren't you? People who, who walk and, and follow Paul. But, but here's the negative in verse 18. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, and now look what they do, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we look for, uh, for, the, for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So those who walk like Paul, they're setting their affections on heavenly things. The people who walk contrary to the way Paul lived are those who preach, but always minding earthly things, offering you prosperity, offering you physical he healings, always worried about physical things in this life, act acting as if God's promises to Israel belong to you. You're to mark those and, and, uh, and stay away from them. Paul, Paul tells you that he's told people that there's many who walk this way, and that Paul tells you weeping that those people are enemies of the cross of Christ. Because they're offering you things, like you hear those prosperity message guys talk, in fact, who's that? You, you guys know the names better than me. Uh, I showed his picture. It's not Casilio or... Cirillo. Cirillo. The other day I'm flipping around and lo and behold Benny Hinn and him are together with two other guys prophesying about what's about to happen in America. America's going down financially by the way, but all believers are going to prosper and God's going to show everyone who we, how he is going to he's the God of of believers cuz the America's going down but all the Christians are going to be rich. So that, that, that's what they're prophesying. But they they were together on one screen. I thought, "Oh boy, I should have got a copy of this one." But uh but see, never did any of them spend any of that TV time that cost thousands of dollars to tell, tell you about the cross of Christ. They minded earthly things, cared nothing about the cross of Christ and how that secured a hope in heaven. So anyhow, that, that, there's a warning there. And uh, if you're to do some marking of good and bad, there's, there, there's a warning that you're to do so. Uh, come over to, well, they're all together here. First Timothy chapter 6. In verse 3, it says, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. That's interesting because the doctrine that he's referring to there is the doctrine that they're turning from in chapter 1, and that is the glorious gospel of the blessed God. They're, they're turning from God's grace. God's grace is designed to produce godliness. And uh, godliness doesn't show up in your Bible until you come to 1 Timothy, because now you have the completed, you're coming into the completed Word of God and the message of grace, and that the understanding of God's grace produces godliness. But anyhow, someone teach otherwise and consent not to these words. It says, verse 4, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy and strife and railing and evil surmisings and perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. That's what all the prosperity pre preachers believe. 
from such withdraw thyself. Don't go to their meetings. Certainly don't put money in their, their collection plates. You don't even need to be watching them on TV. You're to withdraw yourself from those. You know, doesn't it sound like Paul's judging here? If they're not consenting to wholesome words, then he says, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting. <laughs> I mean, that's a judgment call, isn't it? He's saying this guy had no idea what he's talking about. Well, if he's not preaching the message of God's grace, he has no idea what he's talking about. He's just preaching a bunch of words and, and causing problems and, and doing it for, uh, for, uh, for gain, financial gain. And that's what the, the context here. He warns Timothy about not going after money to be content with food and raiment. So he says, from such withdraw thyself. Come over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And you're familiar with verse 15, I hope, and practice it. Verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now he's going to give you an example of someone who doesn't. He says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. See, the doctrine of grace produces godliness, but false doctrine doesn't produce godliness. That profane and vain babblings increase unto more ungodliness, and their word, that is who preaching vain babblings, their word will eat as doth a canker, which is like a cancer, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Oh, Paul marked some people, didn't he? Who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past already, and overthrew the faith of some. So, you know. I look at these passages, and you realize when I read over there in Mark, you know, John says, hey, we, asked this, we told this guy to follow us, and he said, no. Should we forbid him? The Lord said, no, let him go. See, I'm like John. <laughs> I'm thinking, hey, we ought to, we ought to forbid this man. But it, it, it didn't say that he, you know, I, I don't know if the man was really casting out demons or not. The Lord just, just let him go. Now, here's, here's where the balance will come in. One more verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter, uh, yeah. Oh, no, that's two. Uh, the other one's in Titus chapter 3. The man who is a ter- heretic after the first and second admonition reject. But here's the point, is that when you're looking over there in Mark, there's something that's in common with the teaching of Mark chapter 8 and in the kingdom program about uh, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to be acknowledged by the Lord. And, and that lesson that's common, you see it in Paul's epistles, where he, he talks about, about those speaking by the Spirit of God, and then, then he sits, turns around and talks about these that are, that are teaching contrary. While, while it is that you are told of God to mark those and to judge the lifestyle of those who live in sin, and mark those and, and separate and avoid and shun those who teach false doctrine... Once you do that, once you mark someone who's in the false doctrine or someone living wrong, then you've done your job. At that point, go on and do your business. And our business is to serve the Lord, is to be sharing the gospel, is to be glorifying the Lord and how we conduct our life and how we conduct our affairs. Uh, get, get, do your business in living for the Lord once you've made those judgments and those separations, just go on and do what you're supposed to do and leave the final judgment of that person up to the Lord. And, and you see a balance in that. Because I don't know if you've been around long enough uh, to see all this, but when Christians usually get in an argument, uh, I, I've seen the GGF, which is what our church used to be affiliated with them over in, in Grand Rapids, they started getting away from the Bible, and they made the president of their, their school, he, was a, he had a, a psychology, a, yeah, psychology uh, doctorate. And so he made sure that every uh, new faculty member in the school had a degree in psychology. Well, it wasn't long that the Bible gets a little bit less preached and more psychology, and, and they were getting all kinds of psychological practices that uh, some... Some other grace believers said, oh, wait a minute, wait, we're getting way far from this. And, and a, another group, they, they were a group called GGF. Then another group was formed called BBF, Berean Bible Fellowship, 
who made it a point that they were not going to apostatize from God's Word, that our job is to preach the Word, to stand for God's Word rightly divided, and so they, you know, here's where we stand, and you want to stand with us, come join us, and so a whole bunch of people leave GGF and go and join BBF, and they have another conference and a whole other group of people, and they're, they're taking their stand for the Lord. Well, I, I was invited in my early days to go to the BBF conference and enjoyed good Bible teaching, but in every announcement time, here's why we exist, and they put down the GGF all the time. In fact, Pastor Stam in his, in his uh, searchlight would always, every time he'd hear a new wrong in the GGF, he'd report it. So that was like half their job was to keep judging this group and the other job was to stand for right division. Of course, if you don't know, the, the BBF decided there's mistakes in the King James Bible, and if you don't believe that, leave our fellowship. So I eventually had to leave their fellowship because they asked me to. Uh, I could let them believe there's a mistake and still fellowship with them. Just didn't have to agree with them, but they told me I had to agree with them to fellowship with them. So, <laughs> But there are no more groups to belong to anymore. I might go and attend the Bible conference at Pastor Jordan's, but I, don't join, I haven't joined them. I don't part of them. I just fellowship when I want to, and if I don't want to, I won't. Uh, but the one fellowship that's important is the local church. But anyhow, the, the, point, the point of that is I've seen it. There, there's a guy that just got upset with Pastor Jordan a couple things that he taught. Even if I thought Pastor Jordan was wrong in what he taught, this guy is way over the, the line in that he starts producing articles and does mass mailings to tell people all the evil of Richard Jordan. Well, who's supposed to do that? Where, where in the world did you read that? It said avoid them, shun them. It didn't say make it your life mission to put them down and make sure no one listens to them again. And that's what I see that's, in, if you look at the verses, and I say there's a fine line between judgment and separation. Yes, you are to judge. You're to judge a long lifestyle. You're supposed to judge false doctrine. And you're supposed to separate from those things. But then you, the purpose of separating is so those things don't become part of your life. But how about your life? What is your mission? What are you doing? Is your life goal then to make sure no one goes over to this group? Well, it shouldn't be. It, it should be to take a stand for the truth and proclaim the truth. And, uh, and, then, and then move on. And, uh, and that's the balance. That's what the conclusion I was trying to get to last week. But we didn't look at these verses, so I, I couldn't quite get to them. Uh, you know, the bell's going to ring. Let me do something with you. Uh, get Acts 18 and get 2 Corinthians 16. This might be totally in error. <laughs> but I want to just show you something. Since it's on this subject, and I'm not going to be able to get to the verse that I told Roy we're going to teach on today. <laughs> get Acts 18. We only got a couple minutes. And, uh, and for second, is it 2 Corinthians 16? 1 Corinthians 16. What did I tell you? It says 2, but there is no 2 Corinthians. Oh, third, oh, so it is 1 Corinthians. My notes are wrong. Well, I've got to double check that now. Did I do that in haste? Oh, yeah, it's there. Okay, 1 Corinthians 16. Now, Acts chapter 18, this is where Apollos shows up, and he starts learning that he's been out of date. He didn't know the Lord came, died, ascended, rose again, ascended back into heaven, and God has set Israel aside and turned to the Gentiles. So you read about him in Acts 18, verse 24, it says, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in Scripture, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And as he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, uh, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and exp they didn't judge him, condemn him. <laughs> they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly, and when he was disposed to pass to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. And he, and he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the Scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So here's Apollos, great man, finally gets up to date, realizes from Aquila and Priscilla, two Paul's converts, uh, what the grace of God is about. And so now he's able to convince people that Jesus is the Christ and he's brought up to date, right? 
Now, watch this. First Corinthians 16. And here's, here, I'll make a comment, and I could be totally wrong, but I just read through the lines on this. It says, verse 12, As touching our brother Apollos, whom I greatly desire... Uh, no, as touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but, but his will was not at all to come at this time. But he will come when he have a convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, and, and he goes on some other things. Well, Paul here has directed, you know, he tells them about in verse 10, when Timothy comes, here's what to do, I've sent Titus. When he gets to Apollos, he said, I greatly desired Apollos to come to you. But what did Apollos say? No, ah, when I feel like it, I'll go to the Corinth. Paul, you don't tell me when to go to Corinth. <laughs> now, see, that's where I'm reading between the lines. <laughs> it's like Paul's apostle to the Gentiles. I want you to go to, to Corinth. No. Nah. <laughs> Did Paul spend the... Now, if, I could be wrong, but if I'm right, we know that Paul and Barnabas had a big fight, didn't they? Did Paul spend the rest of his life running down Barnabas? Did he sp spend any more time running down, well, not any more, he didn't run down here, but did he spend any time running down Apollos because Apollos didn't do what he said? No, he just went on doing his business. And, and that's exactly what John is to learn over there in Mark chapter 10, uh, chapter 9, is that this man's out there, just let him, let him do his thing. If he's serving the Lord, he'll be rewarded. If he's not serving the Lord, well, leave that judgment up to the Lord. Just go on with your business, John. And... Uh, and so anyhow, I, when I read that in, in 1 Corinthians 16, I'm thinking, I bet you Paul, Paul's pretty upset with Apollos saying no to him, but, but I'm reading between the lines. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you again for the fellowship of the saints here. We thank you for this special Sunday as we do enjoy a time of donuts and coffee together. Uh, but Father, I believe it has a real ministry, and it seems to have proved itself through the years. So we pray that we'll... Uh, Use this time wisely to edify one another, to encourage one another as we get to know one another just a little bit better during this coffee break time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.